the Pratt family descendants today are convinced something wasn't right about the deal. So anyway, soliciting help from family and friends, Deloge formed the Missouri Lead Mining and Smelting Company in 1874. So here's an old, very map of what Bonterre was looking like in uh, 1880. So St. Joe Lead Company is on the south, Deloge Lead Company on the north. And the street at that time, which is now called Benham Street, at the time was called Division Street because it divided the two companies. Um, so there's a lot of interesting things here that uh, we'll, I've got a copy of it if you want to look at it a little closer later that's not that's a lot clearer than this one. <coughs> okay. So anyway, the name of the company at first, I think I said, was the Missouri Lead Mining and Smelting Company. A man named Thomas Pullis was president. He was a family connection. Furman was the treasurer and superintendent, brother Frank, the vice president, and Ferdinand Rozier, who not, I think he might have been a son of the other Ferdinand, was, super, was uh, secretary. The new company acquired the Pratt land, sunk three shafts, and built a mill. Two of the shafts were named Clara and Sophie, after Deloge's two youngest sisters. The practice at the time was to name the mine shafts after people. And if you look closely at the map, you'll, map, you'll see there's a Parson shaft. I mean, there's lots of shafts named after people. Now later, with the industrialization, that practice changed to the depersonal naming them after number, number one, number two, that we're more familiar with today. In 1876, the company's name was changed to Deloge Lead Company. Uh, good relations were established with St. Joe. In fact, they had good relations throughout their history, which probably explains why he sold out to St. Joe twice. <coughs> Deloge also names these, some of these streets in Bonterre these streets after his six sisters. Uh, and two of them, Jane Street and Louise Street, are still there today. In 1877, let's see, how does it work? It's not quite right. uh, I said that family and friends helped Furman succeed in the lead business. Well, Sister Zoe recalls that her father, Rene, Furman Rene, had set aside $10,000 for the education of the four daughters. And the, but the interest on the 10,000 had covered their tuition, so the principal 10,000 was still available. And, they, and the sisters loaned that money to Furman for his lead business. And she remembers that on one Christmas Eve, he showed up at the family party and gave all the sisters, uh, repaid them by giving them certificates of lead company stock. In 1877, Deloge married Lydia Holden Davis, the daughter of Colonel Joseph Davis, who had served with General Sterling Price, a Confederate, in the war. They had four children, but only two, uh, Furman Vincent Deloge III and Joseph Deloge survived childhood. Uh, to further develop his minds, Deloge brought the first railroads into the area. Uh, before railroads, machinery and supplies to be, had to be hauled in and led or hauled out by mule and oxen pulling wagons. And that was especially difficult in the winter or rainy weather like we're having right now. Uh, they had to haul them out to one of three connections that, uh, with the St. Louis Iron Mountain and Southern Railroad, usually just called Iron Mountain Railroad. And those locations were at Summit, which is today on Highway 8, if you blink, you missed it. <laughs> uh, Cadet, which is close to where I'm working. Uh, Mineral Point. So, so Deloge and St. Joe decided to partner. Uh, Deloge put up one third of the money and St. Joe two thirds of the money to build a narrow gauge line to Summit, which was 14 miles from Bonterre. And this was the beginning of the St. Joe and Deloge Railroad. That's an old, that's the uh, number one Number one engine of St. Joe and Deloge Railroad. Uh, Deloge was also involved with the construction of the Mississippi River and Bonterre Railroad that followed in 1888, which was a standard gauge railroad that eventually extended all the way from Doe Run in the south to a place called uh, Riverside in the north near Herculaneum. 
which would halt, so the railroad hauled ore to the smelter at Herculaneum, and, and a couple years later, after it was formed, it established passenger service. In 1886, a fire destroyed Deloge's mill and severely damaged his surface operations, so he decided to sell out to St. Joe. So Deloge got, uh, so St. Joe got Deloge Lead Company's 3,200 acres, and in exchange, St. Joe distributed 40,000 shares of stock to Deloge stock shareholders. Deloge got the lion's share, around 10,500 shares. He also got a seat on St. Joe's board of directors, a seat he held until his death. After selling out to St. Joe the very next year, that's 1887, Deloge obtained land owned by the Bogey family, located, uh, called Mina Joe, located about four miles south of Bonterre, and he restarted mining operations. So his new company was, he, he also bought out a couple other small lead companies, and he called his new company Deloge Consolidated Lead Company. And that was, would become one of the largest lead mining companies in America. The town that formed around it, of course, was called Deloge Town. Now this was a picture I found that was, it was his office, but I have, personally have no idea what, where it was located in town, although I'm sure somebody knows. Uh, <clears throat> so the town was called Deloge Town, eventually just shortened to Deloge. Here's a couple of slides showing Main Street. So the picture just said before World War I. Uh, out where the chat pile was, which I understand is now near where the transfer station is and the railroad there to it. <coughs> so the town dates its found at founding, Deloge dates its founding to 1887, uh, which is the year Deloge started his operations, even though the town didn't get incorporated until 1941. That's similar to like Bonterre dating its founding to 1864, the year St. Joe was incorporated. Uh, Deloge was interested in all kinds of new ideas. He introduced the air compressor and percussion drills into the lead mining business. He is credited with bringing the first telephone into the lead valley. In 1893, he expanded the Flat River, adding a mill that equaled the capacity of St. Joe's. Uh, this is a, I'm not sure hard for you to see, but it's an article in the St. Genevieve Herald talking about how you know, he's bought this property in Flat River and it's got electric lights, and it's all the latest stuff for mining. <coughs> so the notice also in the St. Genevieve Herald lists company officers as Paul Foose, which was Sister Josephine's brother-in-law, Furman Deloge, of course, John Deloge, his brother, and John Felix Valley, the son of John Valley. Like I said, it was, the money stayed in the family. In 1916, the corporate offices of Deloge Consolidated Lead Company moved from Deloge to the Rialto building in St. Louis at 4th and Olive. Uh, that building was later demolished. Uh, in 1927, uh, Deloge's son Joseph built a mansion called Bousier in North St. Louis County overlooking the Missouri River. So Bousier was named after a town in France where Joseph had been decorated for bravery in World War I. And that's a really nice facility. And today it's a Boeing leadership training facility overlooking the Missouri River. Uh, in June 1929, the company was sold to St. Joe for $18 million. So that's the second time he sold out to St. Joe. Now that's four months before the stock market crash, which is exceedingly good time. Mm -hmm. That left St. Joe and National as the only two lead companies still operating in St. Francis County. Furman Vincent Deloge II died a few months later in December at age 84. His estate at the time was valued at $52 million. That's 